So the next speaker is Hasun Kim, who is one of our uh, one of uh, <laughs> what did I say? One of Yale's students. Uh, a lot of you have remarked that uh, Yale's had a very impressive set of students, and Hasun is no no uh, exception. She's an associate pro uh, professor at Georgia Tech and uh, works in heterogeneous computing. So one of the questions I actually asked when I first got to Although you think he's younger than me now. All right. So this is one of PhD comics cartoon that we laughed at when, you were, when we saw when you were a student. Up till today, I thought actually there's only one thing was wrong in this figure for Yale, which you probably all know that his walking speed is constant. <laughs> <laughs> but then, today, I actually I also learned one more thing. There's one more flaw in this figure. OK, Yale was like this, even when he was assistant <laughs> professor. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so back to talk. <laughs> OK, so. Ever since I got a new phone, I start to be very obsessed with this app that's trying to reach the 10,000 steps. Uh, probably for Yale, this is not a big deal, but for me, it's, I, I need to put a lot of efforts, and i trying to carry the phone all the time. So in order to carry the phone, I also start looking at this so that I, can, I won't miscount any of my steps. But then soon I realized that, huh, I can just do this. Why I just need to carry a phone? OK. so. But still, uh, I have a lot of challenges to be there. So today I'm going to talk about what do we do, what should we do to having from uh, the issues in mobile phone, and also what we can do for the future processors uh, to, to carry on these small devices. OK, so issues in mobile computing. OK, I thought energy, 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 uh, probably will be hard many times today, and also we could also say just efficiency, efficient efficiencies. So it's no question that we have to put a lot of effort to have a low power, a low energy for mobile computing platforms. Now when you look at the opportunities in the mobile computing platforms, there's some differences between these mobile platforms and desktops or uh, computers is they typically have many sensors, cameras, videos, or audios, or Wi-Fi, and so on and temperature, or also, just like a sensor is to relate the health or accelerators to count steps. The first, I will talk about some opportunities that we can do for this uh, camera or videos. So as also Trevor pointed out that maybe it's a time to rethink about the von Neumann machines. So one of the opportunities that we are looking at in, at, actually at Georgia Tech is how can you build very low energy video processing? So one of the options we found is uh, using cellular neural network processors. This is a one type of neural network processors. It's used in a variety of the applications. It was originally proposed by Chai and Yang in 1980s. So unlike other neural network processors, uh, this one has local connections. So this is a very good and much more suitable for image processing. And because these connections are very local to each other, it consumes very needed power. So if you have uh, images, each of these CNN cells process and produce up images. Uh, the examples of these uh, uh, things we can do with the CNN processor is not only just to this image processing, can you do more complicated processing algorithms, or we can use for optimal uh, path findings or character recognition. Even though these CNN cells are only connected to neighbor, uh, if actually the information can be passed through these uh, CNS cells. So one good example is finding holes in this character. In order to find the holes, we actually need to know the each pixel, the relative locations to the all other cells. So that means we actually know this blur information. In order to know, one way of solving this is actually compares. So originally, it started with everything is thinks this is a hole, but then it propagated the boundary information and eventually found it is a hole correctly. So, so through this kind of algorithms, uh, it can actually solve many other problems. 
But then this is, if this was, uh, this can solve all the problems, people probably haven't seen this CNN chip by now. But there are several other challenges. Uh, one of the biggest problem is this work on for the small sizes. So we've been working on to trying to increase the scalabilities. And probably one, one of the most difficult problems, which is uh, it, so today's even prob problem is the, the uh, programming. So you know, one of the options is using learning template. So I just mentioned this CNN as one of the examples that we can do to for this uh, input processing unit. So when you have this kind of several inputs, then we need to have a several kinds of special accelerators. And maybe to uh, handling mostly for these video images, but then we can also use, uh, we can also need other kind of special accelerators. And then these will be also connected with other general purpose processors. Or we can also expand it, this kind of this chip, the 3D stack, that the first end, the, fir the bottom layers will be used for handling this kind of input images. And then this will uh, pass through these multi cores and then eventually goes to the memory. Another option that we can do is upload the work to the cloud computing domain. In some sense, offloading the work to the cloud computing domain is the key to have wearable computers. That we want to offload the complex computations in the, in the server and only, only keep this um, little computation into these mobile devices or wearable devices. This might uh, give us better performance. It might also give us uh, better energy savings, but the energy savings are not always comes as free because uh, sending data to the server is actually consumes lots of energy. So we need to have uh, some of these uh, better algorithms to detect what needs to be really offloaded. Another uh, issues of using cloud computing is if we, we don't want to send all the sensitive data, so we have to keep the privacy. Another opportunity to save energy in mobile platform is looking at the memory. Uh, there is a, a of sub, of subset of smartphones memory sizes uh, since iPhone. The iPhone first started with a 250 megabyte, uh, but in today's phones they typically have two gigabyte of memory size, which is actually uh, the same as my notebook's memory size. So we all know that these memories um, consume lots of energy, even though these mobile platforms uh, use EDRAM, this also consumes still quite a bit energy. So here are the current mobile systems, but then the natural options to save energy will be using this non-volatile memory. So non-volatile memory will be a good opportunity to save energy. But what can we do with MVM? Um, probably more when we talk more about these uh, opportunities that you can do. Uh, one of these uh, options we can do with this MVM is looking at the problem of this uh, startup time of applications. So Android phones, uh, or not only just Android, most of the smartphone users tend to execute many applications. And uh, some studies show that most users just execute on the applications 10 and 20 seconds, and then they just switch to other applications. However, uh, this is the, actually this is the data we measure the startup time of many of Android applications. And as you can see, many of these applications have the startup time takes more than several seconds. So if you execute application for 20 seconds and it takes a 22 seconds, three seconds, then already 10% of your time is used for this startup time. So, so Google put a lot of effort to reduce this startup time and then they, uh, one of the solutions they have done is they keep the images inside the memory. So when these applications restarted, it takes a much short amount of time. So these green bars actually shows the execution of startup time when this uh, ex application is restarted. And as you can see, uh, execution uh, startup time is reduced dramatically. But this solution does not work all the time because often these applications start to use many of this memory. And then once it starts to use more and more memory space, then it starts to kick out these other application startup images. 
So uh, this uh, cartoon illustrates that at the beginning, there is a multiple applications that stay inside nicely in DRAM, but uh, one notorious example of the hugging memory space is a Chrome. The Chrome starts to use all the memory space and they pick out all of them. And then eventually it just wipe out all this memory for the other, star of other applications. So one possible solution uh, that we proposed is we keep some of the memory space inside MVM and just for dedicated regions. Uh, it's a dedicated regions for just startup code. So that way that we could save the startup times. All right, so the issues in mobile computing is energy and efficiencies. And obviously there is also other issues like the securities. Uh, I cannot finish the talk actually without talking about branch predictor. <laughs> right. But then, how come the security and branch predictors are related? It turns out they exist, actually. There is a trade-off between security and performance. Just like there is a trade-off between, uh, between performance and energy. One of the examples of the trade-off is in Google's native client platform also called a echo. This is a system that runs natively compiled application inside the browser, and it should guarantee the application's execution is secure. So this uh, diagram shows that inside the web browser, you can run in any kinds of application in sandbox approach, and they use uh, echo and Pepper to provide the infrastructure. The way they provide the secure execution is through eliminating unsafe instructions especially eliminating unsafe branch instructions and then replace them with the safe function calls. So to provide a secure em environment internally inside these necos, they uh, bundle all the instructions, uh, they group all the instructions as a bundle and all these bundles will start at a certain address point. And because these instructions are all bundled, when it jumps, you should always check whether this is the beginning of the new instruction bundle. That means you always, even for the function calls, you have to check, and even for the function returns, you have to check whether this is the beginning of this new bundle or not. So what happens is they will get rid of returns. So instead of returns, you have the function calls, uh, sorry, instead of returns, it has jump, and before the jump, it always check, there is end operations, or check whether this instruction is at beginning of new bundle, and then it jump. So that means, we now we cannot really use return address tag. So solution is fairly simple. Now I mentioned what the problem is, so probably you can easily guess what could be the solution. So solution is we just detect this kind of patterns, and then when you see this kind of NECO return patterns, we just, uh, NECO function calls and NECO returns, we just use specialized return address tag to, to predict the return address. But the real lesson, uh, real lessons we need to take from this example is the security solutions, which can also create new branch prediction problems. All right, so, there's still lots of challenges, issues, and mobile platforms. Um, knowledge and efficiency is secret. But that's not the end, as I said. Uh, we want to move from this kind of phone to more uh, small device. And it's not, also, it's not the end. That's what also the people working on it to want to embed it this, or implant these processors or memories inside this human brain. Um, probably many of you, like me, will have some objections to having this. So probably could prefer to just having uh, this uh, device. It's very, it's very energy efficient and secure and also reliable. And also as you see, the, all of this also needs to have a trade-off with the performance. Thank you and thank you. Everybody.